love Pastor Z, one of my favorite preachers, brave man of God. Love you, man. Come on. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Stand to your feet for a moment and stir it up. Give God your best praise. Come on, God, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You deserve all of me, Lord Jesus. The highest praise be unto you. Hallelujah. Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side? If God's been good to you, say God is good all the time and all the time. Good. Amen. Praise God. You may have your seats as we prepare for this word. Um, I, I just want to say you're here um, in God's timing. He has a word for you this morning. Um, and I want to share a special word today. Before I do, I want to honor Pastor Ruben Jr. Pastor Ruben, we love you so much. We honor you. Um, Pastor Eli, Pastor Jane, the whole leadership here, we love you guys so much. Uh, my, my beautiful wife who's here this morning, uh, I love you. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without her. Amen. Um, do we have that video, Junior? I know the screen's been messing up a little bit. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It just looks like they're scared. Okay, all right. They're going to play a video. And um, as much as I've been trained to not like the Niners, I have a video that I have to, I have to honor this. Amen? And make it your identity is in Jesus. And, um, and honestly, that's been the case for me in my life. I haven't. Um, you know, try to hold on to the football life. Being a quarterback, it's, it's been about, all right, God, this is what I do, but um, I am who you say I am. And, and I've allowed that to sort of, you know, take over my life, and, and he's taken me where he needs me. And so now here we are. Yeah, um, I mean, the bottom line is, like, life isn't about you. Like, that's what I believe, you know. Um, being a part of something bigger than yourself, um, you know, you get wrapped up in, getting all the glory and the fame and the status, it's, I feel like that's a shallow life and um, that, that can you know, fade away pretty quickly. So for me, it's, you know, obviously, yeah, we're playing the Super Bowl. I'm very honored and thankful. I want to win a championship for this organization, but more than anything, I'm you know, trying to just serve my guys on this team well and, and love on them well and the whole organization and everyone in my life, that's, that's how I view it. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, like I said, Football is what I do. It's not, you know, who I am. Um, who I am is who God calls me to be, and, and that's it. So Jesus Christ is, is my rock. He's my Lord and Savior. That's who I live for. Come on, somebody. All right, Brock Purdy. Is it is it hot in here or is it is it just me? Because I, I just have a little, I mean, I got a little Raider jersey on. I had to, I had to represent one time. Real quick, can you take this for me, PDs? I had, I had to come in ready because you guys, and I know, I see some of you in Niner jerseys, and you were Raider fans at the beginning of the year, but you switched up when the Niners went to the Super Bowl. We're going to talk about that. Praise God. I, I have a title this morning, and the title of my message is Keys to Victory. Everybody say, Keys to Victory. Uh, before the Super Bowl starts today, you'll see the analysis bring up this point, keys to victory. And they'll talk about what it's going to take for each team to win the football game. And so I believe that the Lord has given us a word today on what it's going to take for us to win more than a game. For us to win more than a trophy. For us to win more than a Super Bowl. But for us to win our city for Jesus for you to win your marriage for Jesus, for us to win the lost souls in this city for Jesus, for us to make it into heaven, which is more important than any game. But the, the game of your soul needs to be won. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to come against the devil that's trying to attack you. You need some keys to victory this morning. Listen, it's bigger than a game. This is the real game. Come on, somebody. And so there's, there's a blueprint that God has put out for you and I, a people like you and I, to do what we've been called to do. My first point is called yards after contact. Somebody say yards after contact. 
This is a stat, and, and, and there's going to be some football lingo, but I'm going to break it down so simple you'll understand. Yards after contact is a stat in football that shows how much a player has progressed on the field despite being hit. In other words, I, I get the ball, I catch the ball, I'm running, and the first defender hits me, but I don't stop there. Come on, somebody. The first demon attacks my mind, but I don't stop there. Come on. The first lie comes to my mind, but I don't stop there. I'm a Christian that gets yards after contact. I get hit, but I keep moving. I get set back, but I get back up. I get hit in my mind, but I press forward. Are you a believer that gets some yards after contact? You say, I might not be perfect. I might not be perfect, but I'm moving forward. I might not be perfect, but I get back up after I fall. I I want some people in this place that got some heart. Come on, somebody. You got some fight in you. You got some dog in you. You've been down for too long. You've been depressed for too long. It's about time you take back everything the devil stole. Give God some praise in this place. The Apostle Paul says it like this in 2 Corinthians 6, 4. He says, in everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure. Oh, somebody say endure. We endure troubles and hardships. and You know what? I laugh, I laugh sometimes because the stuff we go through are baby trials. The Apostle Paul's been through shipwreck, beatings, imprisonment, and we don't get our coffee right at Starbucks. And we're like, why, God? The devil's after me today. Hardships and calamities of every kind. We've been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs. Is it up there? You can read it with me. Worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity. Come on, somebody. I've been hit left and right, but I didn't get jaded in ministry. I proved myself by keeping my heart pure and my hands clean in this thing. I press forward towards the mark come on he says our understanding our patience our kindness by the holy spirit within us and by our sincere love listen to this he says we faithfully preach the truth he says, I've been through hell and high water, but I'm faithful. Come on, somebody. I'm getting hit in my mind, but I'm faithful. My marriage is under attack, but we're faithful. My children are acting like devils, but I'm faithful. Is anybody in this place faithful and committed? He says, we faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. Oh, I came to tell somebody this morning, it's time for you to stop just playing defense. You've been playing not to lose for too long, but it's time for you to get on the offense. If you're tired of the devil backing you into a corner, if you're tired of demons backing you into a corner, and you say, no, I'm about to fight now. I'm about to give a devil a little bit of his own medicine. I got some prayer in me. I got some faith in me. I got some word in me. I'm about to fast some demons out. Come on, somebody. We serve God whether my favorite part we serve God whether people honor us or despise us that's yards after contact oh they don't like me who cares Jesus says they they didn't like him they're not gonna like you what makes you think you're better than Jesus whether they slander us or praise us we are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. Oh, that's some yards after contact. He said, my heart aches, but I still got joy in me. We are poor, but we give out spiritual riches to others. He says, we own nothing, yet we have everything. Let me tell you something. It's not about how much money you got in your pocket. It's about spiritual riches in this life. It's about building the kingdom of God, not your own personal kingdom. Come on, somebody. It has some yards after contact. 
That's why I love Debo. I can't lie. Niner fans, you know Debo, right? You could almost guarantee that he's never going to get tackled by the first person. They need to group tackle him. They need three or four guys to take this man down because he's got some fight in him. I wonder how many of those, how many of those we have in the spirit today. That it's going to take an onslaught of the enemy to stop you. You're not getting brought down by one little lie. You're not getting brought down by a little persecution. The devil said, I got to send a team their way. Because when they wake up in the morning, they come after me. Come on, the Lord is raising up a church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. And you and I are a people that are a part of it. My second point is do your job. There's a famous coach by the name of Bill Belichick, the, one, the winningest coach in history. And he has a quote that all of his players say they learned under him. And he always tells his players in the meetings, do your job. Do your job. You don't got to get out of your lane. You don't got to do more than your job. We ask you to fulfill your assignment. And if each individual, all 11 on the team, are fulfilling their assignment and doing their job, then we'll be like an orchestra and we will win the game. Everybody's got to be in their lane. I see many times we get out of our lane. Everybody wants to be a Christian influencer. So who's discipling our youth? We got a million podcasts. But well, who's helping in children's ministry? The word says it like this in 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you collectively, somebody say collectively. You're Christ's body and individually you are members of it. Each with its own special purpose and function. Come on somebody. You got your own special purpose and function. You got your own special calling, the role that you're called to play in the kingdom. Stop trying to be like somebody else. I brought a football. Can I have my football real quick? I brought that football. Is there a football right next to you, babe? Come on, throw it to me, Petey. And I'm not good at illustrated sermons, but I figured I'd try it again. So if it don't work out, come on, just hype me up. And we'll edit it out after. Pastor Ruben, come up here. Pastor Ruben, because you're the quarterback. You're the pastor, Amen. Uh, let me get two, let me get two guys. Let me get two guys. Quick, quick, quick. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. No, you got to have a jersey on, brother. You got to have a jersey on. Preferably Raiders jersey. Eli, come on, Eli, come on. Okay, go line up with your, with your pastor, your quarterback, okay? Now, this, this is what we look like in the kingdom when we don't strategize right and nobody wants to do their assignment. Everybody wants to preach. This is what it looks like. You ready? Okay, you're going to say hi. You're going to both run go routes. I'm the, I'm the devil, okay? Here we go. Yeah, and I, and I look like the devil today. No, no, you, you, you guys line up on this side, and you're coming against me because I'm the enemy, okay? Look, that's, that's so like the Niners, not know where to line up and just kind of lost. I understand, okay? Line up on the same side. Line up on the same side. You guys are both going to run go routes. Look how easy it is for the devil when everybody's trying to do what they want to do instead of playing their role. Ready? Go ahead. So easy. Throw it, go ahead, throw it up. Throw it up. So, so easy. So easy, so easy. Okay, okay, line it up, line it up again. Give them a hand, give them a hand. Line it up again. Now what I want you to do is you run a two, you run a slant, you run the go route, okay? This is how we look when we fulfill our assignment. This is how it looks when somebody's praying. This is how it looks when another person's discipling. This is how it looks when somebody's in children's ministry. This is how it looks when somebody's working with married couples. Come on, somebody. You run the two, you run the nine. This is what the devil does. Okay, I got him, I got him. Touchdown, touchdown Raiders, touchdown Raiders, touchdown Raiders. Go back, go back, go back. See, see, that's why you got to fulfill your assignment. You got to fulfill your assignment. And a lot of times the guy, see, you ran the short route. See, a lot of times when you run the short route, you complain. How come I didn't get the ball? But here's the thing about football. This is what I love about football. Everybody, when they win a Super Bowl, everybody gets rings. If we could fulfill our assignment, PDC, legendary movement, we all win. If we could win this city for Jesus, we're all going to see drug addicts set free. If we could win this city for Jesus, we're all going to see marriages restored. We're going to see the Bay Area flip for Jesus. you got to fulfill your assignment. Don't complain when you didn't get the ball. I didn't get the ball. You were part of making the space for the play to happen. 
You're part of the movement. Now check this out. This is what it looks like when people ain't praying for their pastor. Okay? I'm the devil. Because the devil's got strategy too. Sometimes the devil says, you know what? I'm not even tripping on the runners because the pastor don't got no intercessors blocking for him. There ain't no spiritual linemen. You know why? Because everybody's trying to do something else. And so say, hike. Blitz. Sacked. Don't even give a chance for these sorry nine. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't even give a chance for the play to be made. You guys can sit down. And that's what it looks like when we're not praying for our pastor. We're not, we're not interceding for each other. Some days, Pastor Ruben, I'm going right now. That's probably me right now. I'm going for the pass. Boom, I'm preaching right now. And it's, it's the flashy thing to do. But there's somebody right now praying that this word would go forth and reach people. They're blocking for their pastor. I wonder if there's some selfless people that say it's not about me, but it's about the team. And I want to fulfill my assignment in the kingdom of God. I remember, I remember Pastor Eli. We were getting ready for a conference, right? And uh, Miles Minnick was back here. Somebody say, fulfill your assignment. <laughs> and this wasn't Pastor Eli's fault. But, my, you know, Miles likes to get it hyped before he comes up here. So he's in the side right here. And Pastor Eli's getting ready to come announce him. And I hear Miles tell him, hey, Pastor Eli, can you, like, teach them the lyrics to my song? I'm like, did I hear that right? <laughs> Pastor Eli about to go out there and teach a rap song to people? I'm, like, telling Miles, like, hey. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, yeah, can you do that? So Eli comes out, he taught him the lyrics. The lyrics say, devil want to run up on me is bad. God on my side. God is my dad. If the devil want to run up on me is bad. Think it's going to go well. Pastor Eli comes out. All right, y'all, can you sing this with me? Devil want to run up on me is bad. God is my daddy. Daddy is my God. If the devil want to run up on me. I look at Miles and Miles like, that's how it looks when we get out of our, the only one cheering for Pastor Eli, I got to give her props. J Jane was like, God is my daddy, daddy is my God if the devil want him. Later, we went to Pastor Ruben's house for, to eat and, and your pops, Pastor Ruben Sr. said, Eli, I saw you rapping. And then Pastor Ruben Jr. goes, yeah, and it sucked. <laughs> but that's how it is when we don't, you have that picture, I'll show you guys a picture of somebody that I caught fulfilling their assignment last week as I walked by the children's ministry. I was walking here, I was leaving service, and I always look at the children's ministry, wave at the kids, and I caught this lady, I don't even know who she is here in our church, but she took her assignment so serious. Getting ready for second service, for Spanish service, for these kids to come in. And she's praying up the room. She's fulfilling her assignment. See, you and I might not ever see her, but I promise you she got the attention of heaven. You and I might not give her a hand clap, but I promise you God was watching her. You and I might not see her, but she's on God's radar. God honors her. God is for her. Listen, you got to fulfill your assignment. Can't be out here trying to do everybody else's job. If we could all do our assignment, we could win. We could get the victory in the spirit. We could get the victory in our city. We could get the victory in our marriages. Some of you, oh, I, Holy Spirit, why'd you give me this right now? Some of you don't know how to fulfill your assignment in your marriage. You're all out of your lane trying to tell your husband what to do. Well, you submit to me. Read your Bible. Come on, somebody. And then some of us men, we're all out of assignment. Not loving our wives the way that Christ loved the church. Leaving them feeling unloved. Not laying down your life for your wife the way that Christ lays down his life for the church. Out of your assignment. My third point is defense wins championships. Okay? We got some points today. We can't be out here playing offense and not expect a real devil with a real agenda to come and spin the block on us. Come on, is that, can I get some Gen Z up in here? Hold up. 
ain't with that. Devil try to get his lick back. Pull up, spin back. Okay, so, so in Gen Z terminology, when you hit somebody or, or when you pull up on somebody, you, you don't just turn your backs. This is what some of you do in the spirit. You come up, you lead worship, or you preach, or you do something in ministry, you, you evangelize to your coworker, or you witness to somebody, and you just, you just bop the devil in the head. I know I don't really punch like that, okay? It's the jersey. The, the spirit of the Raiders came upon me, okay? You come up, you smack the devil, and then you just walk away like, ha, got him, got him. And then all of a sudden, you don't know the devil's body. You don't expect the enemy to spin back on you. You don't expect, you don't, you're not in prayer expecting the enemy to hit your mind. You're not fasting and, and fulfilling your spiritual disciplines expecting the enemy to hit you. See, some of you, you get caught up in the hype. We need some people that aren't caught up in the hype, but some believers that got spiritual disciplines. They got spiritual disciplines. They don't just know how to preach, but they know how to pray. They don't just know how to lead, but they know how to fast. They don't just know how to sing, but they know how to get in the word. Defense. Somebody say defense. Yes. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand firm, stand therefore. And the Apostle Paul starts to break down a defensive mechanism. Having fastened on the belt of truth. This is your armor. This is your defense. Listen, let me just say this. We are a frontline church. I feel this in the spirit. We, we are a frontline church. So if you want to be a part of a frontline church, have a frontline prayer life. If you want to be a part of a frontline ministry, have a frontline word life. You can't be on the front lines of the battlefield and, and you think you're going to win with no armor on. He says the belt of truth. How many know the belt keeps our pants on? How many know your belt keeps your pants on? And it says the belt of truth. Because when lust tries to lie to you, you can tell the devil the truth. I am a man of God. I am a woman of God. I will be pure and holy before the Lord. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, which protects the heart. The heart. Listen, I've seen this take so many ministers, people, youth out of the game. They don't have anything guarding their heart. They get offended. Church hurt. If your church hurt, I, can I say it like this? You might not have guarded your heart. You put your trust in man, and I understand there's situations that are hard, but you got to guard your heart from offense. Pastors know we guard our hearts from offense all the time. We guard our hearts to not get jaded and keep this thing pure. Then it says, shoes for your feet having put on readiness given by the gospel of peace. It's called the shoes of peace. Right? You have the shoes of peace. Why do we have shoes of peace? Because when worry comes, when fear comes, when anxiety comes, you stand in peace. When lies come, you stand in peace. When the devil attacks your family, you stand in peace. When sickness attacks your body, it's called shoes because you stand in it. You don't sit in it, you don't lean in it, but you stand in the shoes of peace. You stand in peace knowing God has your back. You stand in peace knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you will be condemned you stand in peace knowing that yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me thy rod and thy staff that comforts me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy I stand in peace some of us soon as a storm comes we don't we don't stand we sway Wherever the storm blows, we blow that way. Wherever the storm blows, we blow that way. And God's called the people to be immovable. Immovable. Somebody say that word. No, no, no. Declare it over yourself. Say, say my faith is immovable. You can't move me if you wanted to. I'm fastened to this. I'm fastened to my word. I'm fastened in my prayer closet. I'm secure in the Lord. I stand my ground. We're in trouble when the church compromises. You know what the definition of compromise is? When two parties both make an agreement that they'll both give something up. 
devil says, I'll give you a little bit of pleasure. You give me a little bit of your calling. And if you're not a believer with the shoes of peace that stands your ground, you'll move a little bit. Well, maybe I'll pursue money for a season. Maybe I'll pursue this for a season. Maybe I'll pursue that girl even though I know she ain't never been to church. Not one time. Come on. She only came for you that one time. But you got to be immovable as shoes for your feet, having put on readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. And I take the helmet of salvation. Ooh, somebody say, change your thinking. Some of you, your soul got saved, but your thinking still stinks. Ooh, come on. You're saved. I believe it. You've been saved by the Lord, but you got thoughts patterns that need to be delivered. You got thought patterns that need to be broken off of your mind. Come on, somebody. The helmet of salvation. This is our defense. Praying at all times in the spirit. And then it says the sword of the spirit, which shows us, Pastor Reuben, we're not only on the defense, but the sword is not a defensive mechanism. The sword is an offensive mechanism. So God says there are times to defend yourself. There are times to cover up. But after you've covered up for a while, it's time for you to get back on the battlefield and swing your sword again. It's time for you to get back up and fight again. It's time for you to fight for your marriage, fight for your children, swing your sword of the spirit which is the word of God defense wins championships you could get the team up my last point is this run with purpose run with purpose it's a another football term I heard an announcer say yeah that player he's not the fastest he's not the strongest and he's not the biggest but when he gets the ball he runs with purpose Oh, come on, somebody. You might not be the most talented. You might not feel like you're the number one draft pick, but look at Brock Purdy. Come on, somebody. You might not feel like you were the number one pick. You might not feel like you're the gifted person, and, and you might not feel like that. But if you could run with purpose... If you could be a believer that when you get your opportunity, you run with purpose. You're not aimless. You got a vision. You got a calling. You got determination. This is why we get in trouble. This is why we fall into sin. You know why? Because you have no vision for your life. You don't run with purpose. Pastor Eli, everything that I'm faced with it in life, I run it through the fact that I'm trying to make it to heaven. Is this getting me closer to advancing the kingdom of God and receiving my crown one day? If not, out. It's out of my life. Why? Because I run with purpose. I run with intention. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? Kind of reminds me of the road is narrow. The road that leads to death is wide, but the road that leads to life is narrow. So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. They do it to obtain the Super Bowl ring. They do it to obtain a trophy. They do it for bragging rights against my Raiders. And they clown me all here and I cry and I cry that God would send us some good players. They do it to obtain a perishable crown. Today somebody's going to raise that trophy. But can I tell you, in a hundred years from now, nobody's going to remember that trophy. It's a perishable crown. It's a per perishable trophy. But the Apostle Paul says, we, the fight that we fight, the race that we run, the game that we play, we're, we're playing for an imperishable crown. You and I are fighting for an imperishable crown. Do you know what that is? It's called heaven. It's an imperishable crown called the crown of eternal life. Eternity with God the Father. It's an imperishable crown that nobody can take from you for eternity. It's a bigger game than the Super Bowl. It's a bigger fight. Listen, you have to understand we're fighting for an imperishable crown. So you got to run with purpose. He says, I do not run aimlessly. I don't box as one beating the air. In other words, I'm not doing this for no reason. 
One of my favorite quotes is the writer of Atomic Habits. He says, many people have desires in their life. However, their daily habits don't reflect their desires. He says, many people have desires in their life. I want to be a part of the move of God. I want to make it into heaven. I want to enjoy eternity with the Father. But your habits don't align with your desires. Your disciplines, your decisions have to show that you love Jesus. Your decisions have to show that you're a man after his heart. It's not just lip service, family. It's, and let me say it like this. It's not just church attendance, family. But your life, your habits, your, dis, your disciplines has to run with purpose. Stand to your feet with me. These are the keys to victory. These are the keys to victory in your life. To overcome the enemy. To have victory over sin in your life. You run with purpose. Intentionality. And you do what God's called you to do. Lift your hands with me for a moment. We could just play. Just play. Let the instruments play. And God's already speaking to many of you. Some of you, I could see it in your face. You're tired. You're tired of losing. You're tired of the enemy defeating you. You're tired of the enemy bringing you down. Well, today's your day to get back up. Today's your day to say, the Lord has not made me a loser. He put me on a winning team. I have a purpose. Just keep playing for a second, team. Come on. If you feel the call of God, walk up here. Walk up here. If you feel God calling you by name, just walk up here with your hands lifted. If you need victory today, walk up here. Come on. Victory in Jesus' mighty name. Victory in Jesus' mighty name. Victory over you. He proclaims victory over you. He proclaims victory over you. You're not going to be bound forever. You're going to get the victory over that. Hallelujah. Let your victory reign over this place, Lord Jesus. Let your victory reign over this place, Lord Jesus. That every person that's been struggling, that every person that's been down for a season, Lord God, that your victory would come upon them. That you won the victory for them at the cross. You won the victory for them at the cross. Come on. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord. And he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, 
to get the victory before you leave this place maybe maybe this message was for one person to remind you that you're an overcomer to remind you that you're a winner to remind you that there's a champion on the inside of you to remind you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world I just feel this so strong that some of you sin has been weighing you down the devil has been weighing you down and it feels like you can't get the victory over something it feels like you just can't overcome that one thing it stops you from moving forward in your destiny it stops you from being the husband you're called to be it stops you from being the dad or the mother or the wife and today is the day that God's gonna give you victory over that situation as the team gets ready to sing Sister Jackie, can you get ready to sing that song where you talked about he reigns above it all? And I just want you to know today that you have the victory. The devil is a liar. You will overcome. That's not going to be who you are forever. You will overcome. Why? Not because of what you've done in your own strength, but because of the victory that he won for you at the cross. So if that's you today, I want you to get the victory. We're going to sing this song. I want you to lift your hands. Yes, Jesus. He shall reign forever and ever. Over Antioch, over Antioch, over Antioch, we proclaim victory. Over every drug addict in the Bay Area. And he shall reign forever and ever. He reigns forever. He reigns forever. I feel like God's doing something our whole worship team our whole worship team wants you to turn that way I want you to turn to Antioch Migs you turn to SF somebody turn to Oakley 
and listen, especially those that are leaders that have been laboring and praying for this, we're going to sing this, and it's not for the four walls of the church. But when we sing this, we're singing this over Antioch. That Jesus, because sometimes we can get defeated, but we're saying God is victorious over our city. If you got to jump when you're singing it, I encourage you to do something different today. Here we go. down the street would you go claim it okay well let me tell you God's given us the Bay Area let me tell you God's given us Antioch and it's your responsibility to just go claim it so as we sing this again I don't want you to sing it like a defeated person but I want you to sing it like he's already given it to us come on Jackie let's sing it Pastor Reuben, Pastor Reuben, come up here real quick, Pastor, come on. God, everywhere you step, step your foot, God's giving it to you. Everywhere you step your foot, God's giving it to you. And that's been true in multiple facets of your life, but I just believe today, I just believe that I'm called to tell you that will lift your arms up the way that Aaron and her lifted Moses' arms up. And when you get tired, there'll be, some, there'll be some prayer warriors that come up and they'll lift your hands up when you feel like it can't be lifted anymore. And we just came to tell you, keep your hands lifted because God's given us Antioch for the glory of Jesus. 
He's put it in our path to go and take the land. Somebody say, take the land. So I just want to tell you, we got your back. And if there's any blood-bought, sold-out believers that say, I'm a part of the army of God. I'm going to play my part and do what God's called me to do. Then we're going to sing this as we sing this right here with Pastor Ruben. Let's sing it one more time, team. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He shall reign forever and ever and ever and ever. before conference my goodness Lord Jesus hey church we love you it's my a custom here as a pastor to always say hey we don't do church in rows we do church in circles so I want you to take a look at, at the person around you and tell them man that's family that's we got listen church we got the keys to victory this morning it don't matter who wins but we want the Niners to win but it don't matter because we are victorious in Jesus name how many say amen 
Amen. Before we leave, I don't know if you guys could throw up the flyer up there real, real quick. For those that don't know, we have our conference, our annual conference coming up in two weeks. And so I want you to, if you don't, if you don't know about this conference, take your phone out right now and just snap a picture of it. It is the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th of February. you got to make it. It is a free event. It is a completely free event. There's no charge. We do have uh, 24 available VIP tickets that get you uh, for sure in the first three rows uh, because it's a packed out event. Usually we do overflow outside because a lot of people show up. So, But other than that, general admission, so make it early. It's Friday at 7 p.m., uh, Saturday at 7 p.m., and then we end it Sunday morning here at our Sunday service at 9.30 a.m. Snap a picture of that. How many are ready to go get some good food? We got that good spiritual food here this morning. Go ahead and close your eyes and let's pray out. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the word. We thank you for you, Jesus. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. We leave this place, but we are representative of you, Jesus, wherever we go. We understand that we carry the keys to victory. So when someone needs some Jesus, we are the people who carry the keys, Father God. So we say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And some legendary people say amen. I love you, legendary church.